Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson of logic, we will be learning about De Morgan's law, inverse, converse, and contrapositive statements. So let's get started with the do now that will introduce De Morgan's law. Let M be the statement Henry studies math, and let S be the statement Henry studies science. For number one, what is the statement? the negation of the quantity m and s, and what is the statement for not m or not s? So let's get started with the first answer. So every time we have a negation in front of a parentheses of an entire quantity as seen in number one, usually you start with the statement, it is not true that, and then you proceed with m and s. So in this case, you would write the following. It is not true that Henry studied math and science. Obviously, you could repeat that and say it is not true that Henry studies math and Henry studied science. However, it is redundant. So we can just state that it is not true that Henry studies math and science. Okay, what about the second statement? So for the second statement, you would write Henry does not study math or Henry does not study science. So these are the answers to the do now. Now, why am I bringing this up here? Because this is going to introduce us to De Morgan's law. How is that? Well, it turns out that these two statements in the answer are logically equivalent. By logically equivalent, we mean that they have the same truth values, okay? So they're equivalent, they're equal, they're the same. So how could we prove that? Well, the best way to prove it is using a truth table for all types of scenarios, okay? So let's set up the truth table. So again, here we want to show that the negation of the quantity M and S is logically equivalent to not M or not S. Keep in mind that this symbol here that I'm highlighting here means logically equivalent, which is the same as a biconditional. Okay, so now we have to think about what do we want to include in the truth table? Okay, so here's the truth table. Let's look at all possible combinations here. So for the first entry, usually we enter true, true, false, false. And for the second entry, we enter true, false, true, false. That ensures us all types of combinations between M and S in terms of true and false, okay? Now, the conjunction between M and S, it's simply true, false, false, and false. Remember, in a conjunction, both conjuncts must be true for the conjunction to be true. Now, in the fourth column, now we have the negation of the quantity M and S. So all we need to do is negate the previous column. So true becomes false and the false become true. Okay, so now we have not M. So this becomes false, false, true, and true. And for not S, we refer back to column two and we have false, true, false, and true. And now we're looking at the or statements for both of these, okay? for not M uh, or not S. So as we learned for this junction, at least one of them has to be true for the disjunction to be true. So therefore this is false, this is true, this is true, and this is true. So now if you look at column number four and seven, we can see that the truth values are actually the same, okay? That's already promising. Now let's do the biconditional between the fourth column and the seventh column, okay? So false, false, that's true. Then we have two trues, true, true, and true, okay? Again, in a biconditional, both statements have to be either false or either true for the biconditional to be true, okay? So now we ended up with values that are all true, okay? When you end up with a value that is all true, that is called a tautology, okay? So let me write it here. So a tautology 
is when all truth values are true. So what does that mean? It means that we have proven something that indeed the statement here on top, so let me highlight that in yellow, that this here is always logically equivalent no matter what the truth value for M and S is. That means that, okay, if the left side is true, then the right side is true. And if the left side is false, then the right side is false. So that is called a tautology, okay? When everything is always true, no matter what. Usually when you end up with a tautology, you have proven something. You can come up with a law or a theorem, okay? In this case, this is a law, which is called De Morgan's law, because it's always true. So again, according to De Morgan's law, not M and S is logically equivalent to not M or not S, okay? You can think of it as follows. Imagine that you take that not, kind of like a negation sign that you distribute in the parentheses, but then you also have to flip the end to the or. Now, quick question. What if you had the quantity M or S negated as shown here? So instead of an N, now we start with an OR. What do you predict happens in this case according to De Morgan's law? Well, again, you distribute the negation, but then the OR turns into the end, as shown here. Okay, so that's basically De Morgan's law. Uh, the second part, if you want to, you can actually prove it yourself using a truth table as we showed here. And I promise you, you're going to end up also with a tautology for the second case, which means that it's always the case that is always true. Okay. Okay. So let's look at another example for today's lesson that will lead us into the concept of inverse, converse, and contrapositives. Okay. So here's the example. Let P be the statement a polygon is a square and Q be the statement the polygon has four right angles. Assuming that both P and Q are true, express the following conditional statements. Are the statements true, false, or uncertain? As you can see here, we want to write out the statements first uh, according to the scenarios here in problems 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then we want to decide if these are true, false, or uncertain. So the best way to do this is to organize it in a table, okay? So let's get started with the first statement, if P then Q. So here's the table. If a polygon is a square, then the polygon has four right angles. So do you all agree that that statement is true? So yes, it's true, okay? So let's think about this. You have a polygon that is a square. Obviously, all angles are right angles inside, okay? So what's the statement for the second one? You're basically negating the P and negating the Q. So you're saying if not P, then not Q. Well, in this case, the statement would be if a polygon is not a square, then the polygon does not have four right angles. So is that statement always true? If a polygon is not a square, but wait a second, let's say it's a rhombus, right? Well, then it's true, right? Then it doesn't have four right angles. But the polygon, if it's not a square, could also be a rectangle. In that case, the polygon does have four right angles. Hmm. So in this case, I would say that the statement is really true or false depending on the situation. So we can say it's uncertain here, okay? Okay, so let's move on to if Q then P. What's that statement now? Well, in that case, you will state it as if a polygon has four right angles, then the polygon is a square. You know, that case is actually very similar to the previous case. If a polygon has four right angles, does it have to be a square? Not really. Again, it can be a rectangle. And in this case, the truth value is still uncertain. Now let's move to the last statement. If not Q, then not P. The statement in this case would be, if a polygon does not have four right angles, then the polygon is not a square. Is this statement true or false? Well, if we think about this, 
okay, the polygon does not have four right angles, obviously it cannot be a square. So therefore the statement is also true. Okay, so why are we doing this? Because it seems like that the truth value for the first statement, if P then Q, is logic equivalent to the last statement, right? Because both of them are true. What if both of them were be false? Would they both be false as well? Well, maybe. We can test that out. But let me first introduce you to the names here, okay? So for the first one, if you have if P then Q, that's called a conditional statement. If you negate the P and the Q, that's called an inverse statement, okay? If you flip the P and the Q and write if Q then P, that's the converse. And if you write if not Q then not P, that is called the contrapositive, okay? So the idea here is to check if the first one and the fourth one are logically equivalent or not. So again, is if P then Q logic equivalent to if not Q then not P? Is the conditional logic equivalent to the contrapositive? So how can we check this? Again, as we learned in the do now, we can use a truth table, okay? So here I already have generated a truth table for you. Um, so let me show you the truth table. Okay, so there it is. So if you want to, you can actually pause the video and you can try this out if this is logically equivalent, okay? If they're logically equivalent, then in the last row, you want to end up with a tautology to prove it, okay? Okay. So here are the truth values, okay? So uh, obviously we want to negate the P, then the Q. The conditional statement is true, false, true, true. The contrapositive is going to be true, false, true, true. Now, again, this is promising because we have the conditional and the contrapositive to have the same truth values, okay? Now, if you take the biconditional to check if they're logically equivalent, everything is true in the end, which means that, yes, they are logically equivalent. So basically, what I'm trying to say here that no matter what statement you say, for example, if P then Q, if you take the contrapositive, that is always going to be logically equivalent. And here's the summary, okay? That the conditional and the contrapositive are logically equivalent. Okay, so here's the summary of today's lesson. First, we learned about De Morgan's law, okay? If you, again, if you have a negation of the quantity M and S, that turns into not M or not S. And if you have the negation of the quantity M or S, that is logically equivalent to not M and not S, okay? Then we learned about what a conditional statement is, what an inverse statement, a converse statement, and a contrapositive statement is. And we also learned that the conditional statement and its contrapositive, they're always logically equivalent. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. If you have any questions, please post a comment to this YouTube video. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Otherwise, have a wonderful day.